Have you ever wondered why objects look distorted when you view them through glass and water? The answer is to do with the refraction of light. In this lesson, we are going to look at why light refracts, how to draw refracted ray diagrams, and measure the angles in those diagrams. One of the most common uses of refraction is in lenses. Here we can see the light coming from a ray box. When a converging lens is put into the path of the light, you can see that it refracts and causes it to change direction. When a diverging lens is put into the path, it is refracted the opposite way. Now we're going to look at why the light changes direction. In this animation, the light is being shone from the top down. The material on the top is air and below it the light passes into some glass. At this angle the light is not refracted. However, however, increasing the width of the beam so that you can see the wavefront reveals the process. You will notice that the light slows down as it enters the glass and the wavefronts become closer together. We can observe the refraction of the light by changing the angle that the light enters the glass. As the light slows down, in order for the wave fronts to become closer together, the light is forced to change direction or refract. Here we have a ray diagram of the light as it enters and leaves a glass block and refracts at both of the boundaries. We are going to measure the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction of the light as it enters the block. All of the angles are measured from a normal, just like in reflection. To draw the normal, you will need to line up your protractor along the surface of where the glass block would, have, would be and mark at 90 degrees. Next, you draw a dotted line from the mark to the point where the ray enters the glass block and to continue past the surface of the glass. To measure the angle of incidence, line up the zero degrees along the normal and read off the protractor to the incident ray. The same process is used to measure the angle of refraction. The zero degrees is lined up on the other side of the normal and the refracted ray's angle is read off. And in the next section we're going to measure the angle of incidence and angle of refraction from a real ray. So I mark where the light is coming out of the ray box and the point where it enters the block and the point where it exits the block. Now we can remove the ray box and get my ruler out and join up my first two marks and my second two marks. Because it's a ray diagram I always have to put the arrows on to show the direction that the light is travelling. I get my protractor out and measure the 90 degrees, get the ruler, draw the dotted line passing through the point where it enters and there's my normal. This angle here is the angle of incidence, and this angle here is the angle of refraction. So next we just need to line up the zero along the normal to measure the angle. My line wasn't quite long enough. And, and 65 degrees, turn the protractor around and again line it up and measure it off. And we've got 40 degrees there.